part two of upgrading our Rongfu RF31 mill drill. In part one, we installed a digital readout for more accuracy. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner. Please click on that and check that out, and be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, part two, we're going to install something that will also help with our precision, if you will, and that is a power feed for the x-axis. This will put an electric motor, so instead of having to crank it left and right, we'll have power feed, which will let us go multiple speeds left and right. This will help with accuracy because it gives us a better surface finish. So any cutting tool in a mill on a given material, so aluminum or steel, uh, depending on the size of the bit, the type of the bit, whether it's carbide or high-speed steel, or you're cutting aluminum or you're cutting steel, needs a particular speed, uh, so RPM, we adjust with the belts up here, and it needs a specific feed, so a feed rate across the material, and uh, the proper feed rate will give you a better surface finish, so you'll have less grooves in the surface, and it'll be a smoother cut. So the power feed consists of a motor and control box like this. It mounts over here on this side of the table and replaces this crank pulley here with this gear. This is the bracket that mounts it, and it should be a pretty simple install, except I made a mistake when I installed the DRO last time. So I put the x-axis linear rail here on the front of the table in the groove where the x-axis stops used to be. The only problem is now I need to use the x-axis stops with this switch for the power feed. So this is a safety switch, which will stop the power feed from basically crashing uh, one end or the other at hard stops. So I need to remove the x-axis linear rail, mount it to the back side of the table, and that way I can put these stops and this switch where it's supposed to go on the front here. All right, so this is the back side of the table here, and this is a rubber, plastic, whatever uh, cover to keep metal chips from wearing the, uh, bet the cross slide ways out. So this is just held on here with a piece of flat steel, and it was held in with two bolts like that. So I want to keep this, but this is also on the fixed portion, so I need to mount sensor, if you will, of the linear scale there. So my plan is to replace this piece of steel with a piece of aluminum angle like this, where it was previously, and then I can just drill two holes here and mount my sensor to this. Okay, so now that I got the linear rail off the front, relocated to the back, I tested to make sure it works. Now I can go ahead and start actually installing the power feed. To remove this crank, pull out this screw, comes right off. Then in this place, we can install this gear. Little blue Loctite. This is the bracket to hold the motor on, and it's actually two different pieces, and it's kind of loosely assembled with these two bolts. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these two bolts here and we actually don't need to remove them all the way they're slotted so we'll just loosen these out of the way so that we could separate the two pieces of the bracket this bracket is going to mount to the table here we will set its final location here a little bit later all right so the motor installs to the bottom of the little bracket here with a couple uh, socket head cap screws so once again dab of blue Loctite, and then we can hook up our rapid switch right here, like this. So none of this is installed fully tight yet. So these are still loose so I can adjust it. Uh, this is obviously still loose because we have to be able to adjust the meshing of this gear and that gear. So I'm gonna flip this over here. All right, so you can see this is the gear on the table, and it's got a mesh with the, the gear there. So I have basically had to push this all the way forward it can go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and snug this up on the table to make sure it's meshed properly. This is, almost, this is a, a bit of a three-handed operation, if you will. We need to put some uh, graphite grease on the gear down here when we test it. 
Um, it says do not use silicone grease, so put some grease on there. But uh, now we need to install the safety switch here in the middle. So, so these just have a uh, trapezoidal shaped nut for the slot here, and then a little keyway to keep them from rotating. So the limit switch itself mounts to this adapter plate, which mounts to these existing holes in the middle. <coughs> All we have to do is install this using our 5 16th bolt. So this is the spacer for the limit switch. And uh, big surprise, it uh, doesn't actually fit. It doesn't have clearance for, uh, there's a grease fitting down here. And this is probably way too slow of a spindle speed and too slow of, a, of an actual cross feed. But uh, look ma, no hands, it's cut itself. So we'll see what we get. All right, so there's the grease fitting that I needed to clear with this cut on here. So looks like we've cleared that and then some. I don't know what the new limit switch is versus the old one, but this plastic cover that came on top of it uh, didn't really fit. I wouldn't let me mount it this low and then it's stuck above the top of the table here. So I've taken it off. We'll see if it works, it should. That side seems to work. Let's see about the other side here. All right, so limit switch seems to work on both of those sides. All right, so let's talk complaints about the power feed. They're both pretty minor, uh, but the first one is how far, how long these bolts are. So these bolts are unnecessarily long, and uh, the only real issue is they kind of make it a challenge to get the uh, T-nuts in here, but it's still doable. So uh, that's kind of a minor complaint about that. Uh, the other thing is just kind of a build quality thing. So this is the, uh, this is the cover for the uh, gear down here to keep it from getting tangled up and stuff. It doesn't stay. So that's uh, the only other real complaint. Now that I got the power feed installed, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. So I've got a piece of hot rolled steel scrap clamped up in the mill vise here, and I've got a three inch carbide shell mill or face mill, whatever you wanna call it, uh, installed in the mill itself. For any given material and cutter, there is an appropriate speed, and that is spindle speed and feed, and so that'll be our feed through the material. So this is just some A36 or 1018 mild steel. We have a carbide cutter that's three inches diameter. Um, and so we need to know what RPM and cross feed speed we're gonna use. So there are formulas for this, but luckily like anything else in life, there's probably an app and probably a free app that'll tell you what you need to know. So for our uh, indexed face mill here, that is a carbide uncoated three inches in diameter with four flutes, so four cutting surfaces. Uh, we want to use 475 RPM and we want to feed it at 11.44 inches per minute. I have adjusted my belts up top, 475 RPM. So that's one of the settings there. And then for the cross feed, the instructions didn't include any actual speeds that it would provide. So what I've done is I've used the uh, DRO and I've just simply timed a three inch X movement on each speed setting. And uh, this is what I've come up with here. So uh, on setting one, you only get about an inch and a quarter um, inches per minute. Two, you get six, three, 10, five, 12, seven, 13, and nine, you get 14. Now, if you notice, I've left out uh, four, six, and eight. And really that's because you know, there's not that much difference. There's, you know, maybe an inch or half an inch between these. So they're not really worth mentioning. If I need something in between, I'll use something in between. So for 11 inches per minute, 11.44, I just went ahead and put it on five, which is 12, which should be close enough for this test. So let's uh, see how good of a surface finish we get cutting across the surface of this piece of steel. All right, so we're gonna try a 10 thou pass across the surface of this steel, see what we get. Well, 
Well, that didn't go as planned. Uh, one of the indexing pins in my shell mill cutter uh, flew out, so I guess that wasn't tight. Let's, uh, let's see what we got, and then we may have to do that test again. So here's another thing you can do is a rapid switch. So if I'm traversing back to get a new cut, I can push the rapid switch, and it goes somewhat faster. All right, so we've switched to a regular end mill here. It says we need uh, 841 RPM and uh, four and a half inches per minute with a uh, solid end mill, a high speed steel, a high speed steel solid end mill, uncoated on the uh, hot rolled steel. So that's what we've got going here right now. We could do uh, 819 RPM, which is as close as we could get to the 804, and. Uh, I've got it between one and two. So this should give us a nice even finish. And we're only doing about a 10 thou depth of cut. So that was our first cut was uh, half the width of the end mill roughly. Now we're gonna go uh, full width if you will. And we'll see what it does on this pass and then we can compare them. So for the last pass, what do you say we crank it up to uh, 10 inches per minute, which will be basically double the recommended speed to feed, and see what we get. We're only doing a 10 thousandths of an inch pass, so it may be just fine. Here's the finished product uh, using an end mill. Looks pretty good, pretty smooth, a little bit of a uh, little transition line between the cuts, but uh, this one over here, real smooth, and that's well, half an end mill width at the uh, recommended speed. Here's a full end mill width at the recommended speed, and then here's a full end mill width at double the recommended speed. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's just a quick demonstration of what you can do with the combination of a power feed and a DRO. Uh, we can be very precise and we can get good surface finish like this. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.